unwanted or intrusive distressing sensations of genital arousal you know, may lead to different conversations about PGAD GPD, whereas others, you know, may lead to more hypersexual disorder or something, right? Or something else. But we need to understand deeply, you know, sort of what this experience is about as opposed to making a quick judgment. We can't just label someone, um, you know, in a stigmatizing way without really understanding their experience as well. Right. There may be obsessive compulsive features as well in terms of that hypervigilance and the rumination, the constant thinking about it. A lot of, for a lot of people, the symptoms are sort of their world. Like I know, especially as a psychologist, right? A lot of people may not buy into psychology being helpful and people may assume that because they're seeing a psychologist, it is all in their head. So like some thoughts, thoughts behaviors be. and emotions. We always start out with a, like a lot of information and a lot of this is adapted from vulvodynia and chronic pain so literature, sort of, right? Are the obsessive compulsive features part of the PGAD? Or are they sort of separate and sort of being rolled into the PGAD because it's the person's sort of like overarching sort of approach to controlling, you know, sort of outcomes in their lives. PGAD, but you're, so whether it's a feature or a diagnosis, you have to approach them both um, in a way that helps with those symptoms right? entering. We say, if this somehow is not working for you, please tell us because we can then make referrals to other people or we can adjust to make it more fitting of your experience. So we want the feedback.